Oh, hello. I've got these two custom wallets. I don't have a before. There's no, <laughs> there's nothing I can fake here. It's already done. We're gonna go into the process of making both of these. Anyway, here's one last look before we go into the process. So the first step is gonna be to use some Angelus deglazer to take that protective coat off. And that's just gonna make it easier for the paint to adhere to the item that you're painting on. Here I'm using some cotton pads. You can use cotton balls or paper towels, whatever you've got at your disposal really. Because I wanna use a lot of neon paints for this piece, I'm making sure that there's a solid white base layer to really allow the neon paints to be as vibrant as possible. In between coats, I'm hitting the wallet with my heat gun just to make sure the paint dries as fast as possible because I want to be painting because that's the fun part and this prep work is just kind of necessary. After the wallet is completely dry, I'm taking some Sorrel transfer paper and I'm transferring my drawing onto the wallet. You might have seen me do this before, I just prefer this method because I'd rather have a really accurate sketch first. I don't really want to deal with the struggle of trying to draw something accurately onto a surface that isn't even and that doesn't erase well and all sorts of things. The transfer turned out a bit smudgy just because of where my hand was resting on the paper. So I'm just taking some extra white paint and painting out some of these smudges. And this is just to ensure that the neon paints are as vibrant as possible because they're quite thin and require many, many layers. Finally, getting to paint is both exciting and a bit scary. It's scary to deal with something that's completely blank when you're not really building off of anything. This is the part I struggle with the most. I probably should be a bit more patient at this stage. I'm actually really intimidated because I'm finding it a bit difficult to really nail down the skin tones that I want. And because the pose is a tight crop of two bodies intertwined, it's really hard to get the separation of what's what established and rendered accurately. When it's a figure, it's a little bit easier because you can, you can almost be a bit illustrative with it. Something like this, there are a lot of organic shapes and shadows that are created by bodies that are essentially squished together. It's not as recognizable as a shape as just like a figure or a face. So at this point, I've established a little bit more of the details of the arms and how they're interacting with each other. And a big key of selling the body interactions is gonna be placing the shadows and highlights correctly in this piece. I'm trying to go with more of a neon, abstract, almost psychedelic palette and design. In order to do this, I have to introduce those neon colors somewhere. And I started with these like quick little brush strokes that are almost rhythmic in nature. I end up really liking this approach and it's gonna lead to me abandoning a more realistic rendering of this piece and going more into a system of using different types of neons and non-neon colors and energetic lines to communicate depth and volume. I'm needing to rest my eyes on the piece a little bit. I need to take a little bit of a break. So now I'm just going into painting the inside, which I was fully intending on doing because I prepped it. One of the drawbacks I find with working on such a small scale is that you don't really get to be super expressive with your brushwork. But a benefit is that neon paints can be some of the more expensive paints and you're just using less of them when you're working on something smaller. So as the piece is filling out a little bit more, I'm getting a bit more of an idea of how I want everything to coexist. I'm getting a bit more bold with how I'm loading my brush and what kind of brush strokes I'm using. I'm adding some squiggly lines, ooh. Uh, but I'm also loading the brush sometimes with two or more colors or mixing colors right on the canvas. This sort of dual color method approach where either I'm loading my brush with multiple colors or I'm trying to mix colors directly on the canvas, I feel like these are making some of my favorite marks. And a metric that I use for making interesting paintings is trying to make interesting marks. 
So you'll see in parts of the painting there are areas that are really rough and scratchy and some areas that are really clean. This leaf-like mark that I leave on her cheek is probably like my favorite thing in the entire painting. I guess this is kind of an argument for being a bit bolder, possibly even a little bit reckless in what you're doing, just because you might end up with something super interesting that you love, rather than something that's trying to be super representational of what you're painting. One of the challenges of this painting was tying everything together. So initially the faces were, I guess, not realistic, but they weren't really abstract in a way that the body was being rendered which means I'm just going to have to take a bit of a risk in terms of how I decide to render the faces. Faces are always kind of a struggle when it comes to more abstract rendering because certain lines can connote certain things on a face and potentially change the expression. These faces are side profiles and relaxed, so we're good. With a few final touches, little details here and there, more dot sequences, I think we can call this done, which means it's time to give this a bit of a glaze. So before we get into the big reveal of that wallet, this is another minimalist wallet. It's even smaller than the first. I'm going to skip narrating the process of the prep work here. It's the same process as the other wallet. I will say though that this wallet was the first one I did. I do however want to go over the differences in approach and style. For this one I'm establishing a solid neon pink background and I want to paint the figure with a bit more realism and have that contrast with the very flat graphic neon background. I'm taking a more measured approach with the skin tones. I'm really slowly building up shadows and, and highlights. I'm also using cyan as an accent color wherever I can because I really like how it contrasts the neon pink. So I'm going to scatter it kind of throughout the painting, like that little tab that's part of the wallet, her phone, and little, I don't want to call them highlights, but just color accents throughout the piece to really tie that together. One thing I really like doing in my paintings is using something like a, a cyan or a, a teal, green, that sort of thing. Something that doesn't really exist literally in the reference photo or in real life, but is something that I feel like adds a lot of visual interest and texture to both the skin tone and the composition overall. I'm adding a lot of neon pinks into the skin tones. And that's just, again, to create a little bit more depth in the variety of color. I really struggled with the rendering of the face because it was so close to the edge. So I used some of the pink to obscure her face, which I feel like works thematically with the subject matter. So these are more or less done, so it's time for some beauty shots. got these custom wallets that I did. I'm gonna do a standing full. I don't really want to. It's not gonna be inverted. It's not gonna be good. I'm inside. I'm scared. I don't want to break the TV. I've done this so many times. Weird having stuff in your hands and then trying it. Okay, so. Oh, I'm gonna practice without these. I immediately feel better about this. Why? Maybe I should do the step. The step always helps. That little hop back. Maybe I do like that. That was not bad. The hot back really helped. Huh? 